What is happening guys? My name is Jimmy and today we are reviewing Iron Maiden's No Prayer for the Dying. Now, Iron Maiden released this album back in 1990, and this was the first ever album without Adrian Smith. Before that, it was Demar. They released the masterpiece, was the Seventh Son for Seventh Son, which is a, just a 10 out of 10 album. So, how did that compare to No Prayer for the Dying? You know what? Let me tell you something. That this album is quite is quite different. At times, it seems quite it seems like a quite straightforward album. There is no concept to the album, but the lyrics overall, the lyrical nature of this album is pretty strong in my opinion. And I do really enjoy the elements of surprise, such as the dual solos by Yannick and Dave Murray, and Bruce Dickinson's vocals are just exceptionally fantastic on this album. But what really gravitates towards me is the different sort of signatures you're getting throughout this album. It's not only as progressive as Seven Son of the Seven Sun. It's also got these nice changes, nice transitions, especially throughout Mother Russia, uh, which you can't help but bang your head to. This album is okay in my opinion. It's definitely not the best My Maiden album. It's sort of a mediocre album. Today I'm basically going to give you my thoughts on what I thought about this album. So let's talk about the production. The production again is very good on this album like all Iron Maiden albums. The production is stellar. You can hear Nico's drumming throughout this album. You can hear Dave Murray's and Yannick's guitar work. Fantastic. And Steve Harrison bass is very prominent throughout this album. Bruce Dickinson's vocals are again absolutely fantastic. Really love the aggression you get from Bruce Dickinson. Although the Fear of the Dark, he was really experimenting with his vocals. In this, it seems it's very straightforward. You can tell there's a lot of emotion conveyed. Lyrics overall are pretty good in my opinion. It's very strong, basically war themes as well, especially through songs like Tail Gunner. It runs silent, run deep, along with maybe religious beliefs as well throughout Holy Smoke and No Prayer for the Dying which is all about the meaning of life but I really love Public Enemy number one that's a great song it's all very strong and political based but I really do enjoy the overall concepts of this album as well it's like some songs do do relate to other songs like the assassin reminds me of killers and also hooks in you also reminds me of Charlotte the Harlot again it's brilliant storytelling now let's talk about Tail Gunner. So the album keeps off with Tail Gunner and it's pretty straight on firing. Into the sky, never you and Love the use of the drum fills by Nico along with the prominent bass by Steve Harris. Steve Harris's bass is very good, really enjoyed the licks along with the nice rhythmic guitars by Dave Murray and the nice solo by Yannick throughout this song. It's pretty hard hitting, it's fast. This song is, this song is about Tail Gunner, what happened in World War II, all about the air fighting. I believe that Tail Gunner was a crew member that sat in the rear, rear of the bomber and it was to protect the aircraft. So he would probably, I think he would actually shoot from behind to get rid of the enemies. But I love that, and I love the use of the word nail that fucker to kill that son. Really enjoy that line. <laughs> And it's sort of a double metaphor here. The Fokker was apparently a Dutch plane manufacturer whose factories were taken by the Nazis. I love the double metaphor here. Overall, this song is very strong and it's a great way to kick off this album. <laughs> So then it leads on to Holy Smokes. Now Holy Smokes is a really enjoyable song. Holy smoke, holy smoke, this song is definitely talking about scandals and how people are taking advantage of other people in order to gain for themselves. So I really love the concept of this song. Bruce Dickinson's vocals are just fantastic in this. You get a really nice guitar solo by Yannick and Dave Murray, which is one of the fastest guitar solos I've seen, I've heard from these guys. <laughs> It 
It's fast, it's energetic, it's unbelievable, hard-hitting stuff. This song, really love the drum fills by Nico, and the over-intensity of this song. There's some harsh, aggressive vocals by Bruce as he conveys that emotion. But yeah, Holy Smokes is very melodic as well. It's got a catchy chorus, and I love the overall structure of the song. It gets kind of repetitive, this song, but it gets repetitive in a good way. Then it leads on to a song called No Prayer For The Dying. Love just the build up of the song, the nice guitar leads by Dave Murray and Yannick, and you just get an awesome moments. The dual solos are fantastic. <laughs> Steve Harris's bass is very prominent throughout the song, and Bruce Dickinson again stars on this. It's angelic at times, but yet it's firing, and it really builds up this song. This song's called sort of like a crescendo, so it builds up and builds up. And from then, at the conclusion, God give God give me the answer to my life. Love that conclusion. This song doesn't really follow a structure, which I really do enjoy. It really tells a story. So this song, I, I believe, is all about the meaning of life and how one person is trying to question God where he doesn't get the answers. So that's what I was getting from this song. But I just love the overall build up of this song. It's just fantastic. You get amazing guitar moments throughout this song. <laughs> Dickinson vocals are fantastic. Nico's drumming is magnificent as well. The reduction overall was very clean and I love it. Steve Harris's bass, very prominent throughout this song. And again, another good song by Iron Maiden. Probably one of the best songs off the album. Then we lead on to Public Enema number one. Very cool, very cool. It's a really interesting metaphor as well. Public element number one, saying maybe the government is actually fucking you up the ass. Basically what they are saying here. And I really love the, the how aggressive, how aggressive I made an art throughout this album. And this is a very aggressive song. And I really enjoy the overall intensity. <laughs> Another nice guitar moments by Yannick and Dave Murray. Uh, what's really missing is Adrian Smith on this album. Unfortunately, he was gone. But again, a very enjoyable song by Iron Maiden. It's a good song, not the best Iron Maiden song, but for sure, it's it's definitely run right in the middle of the pack of the album. That leads on to Fate's Warning. Be the devil, I'll be in him. You can count on just one thing. This song is fantastic, it is, and it's very interesting, the concept of the song. Bruce Dickinson's vocals are slightly, slightly monotone throughout this song. I love how vocal chords really build up and really express that emotion. It's a really nice drumming as well. And then you get an amazing, get a few guitar solos, but at the end, it leads on to a guitar solo. And this guitar solo is absolutely fantastic. I love the conclusion of this song. This song is talking about how everything may be laid out for us in life. How everything could be a coincidence. Is our experiences simply a string of coincidences? So that's what I was getting from this song. A very interesting concept to the song which I really did enjoy. I really did enjoy this song for what it was. Beautiful guitar solos throughout this song, especially that ending. That ending was fantastic. These really nice guitar licks as well. Beautiful song, but I made it and absolutely loved it. Leads on to The Assassin. The Assassin is a really good song. To me, it really reminds me of the concept of the Killers, the Killers song. I feel this is sort of a concept. Back when Portiano was uh, the lead singer of Iron Maiden, this does really sound like something out of the Killers, in my opinion. I really love how they're going back throughout time here. 
This is really enjoyable. I really love the nice guitar leaks throughout the chorus. Get another nice guitar solo. Verses are really good. <laughs> I really love the aggression in Bruce Dickinson's vocals. What is good about this song is how fast and firing this song is as well. Especially like chorus, cause I'm the assassin. Love that. Better watch out. Cause it just sounds like that this person is actually stalking his prey and he's getting paid to kill that person. And I really do enjoy that story. Leads on to Run Silent, Run Deep. Now this is a song that, yeah, was okay in my opinion. It's definitely not one of my favorite songs off the album, but again, it's got that atmospheric vibe. Feels like you're under the ocean. Feels like you're under ocean, and I just feel like this is definitely talking about maybe something that's happened in World War II or something like that, about the submarines. Because running silent, running deep, you're underwater, sink into your final sleep. Running silent, running deep, we are your final This is definitely talking about the warfare, maybe in the Pacific Ocean back in World War II. But yeah, there's a lot of emotion conveyed throughout this song. Again, you get a nice guitar solo by Yannick Dave Murray. The outro is fantastic as well. Definitely not the best Iron Maiden song in my opinion. So it leads on to Hooks In You. Hooks In You is a very good song. It's a concept to maybe Charlotte the Harlot. Hooks in you, hooks in me, hooks in the scene and for that way. 22 Acacia Avenue, I gotta say something like that because even the verse first, verse one, uh, reminded me of 22 Acacia Avenue, which was I got the keys to view at number 22. At times it is quite repetitive, but they break up the structure with this nice refrain or bridge where things really slow down and it comes back in the last last part of the song. Nice guitar solos throughout the song, bass is very prominent, and also Nico's drumming is just great in this song. So yeah, this is another enjoyable song. Definitely talk about Charlotte the Harlot here. Pretty sure she's maybe still at 22 Acacia Avenue, and she's still a prostitute. It's, a, it's an enjoyable song, it's pretty good. We get to bring your daughter to the slaughter. Bring your daughter to the slaughter. Love this song, really do. I love how melodic it is. It's very simple, it's very catchy. <laughs> I have to be very critical. It's a very repetitive, a very repetitive, but damn, I love it. I love it and it's repetitive in a good way, in my opinion. It's not like Angel and the Gambler where they repeat the chorus 22 fucking times. I believe this is the second single as well. Maybe you have a protagonist here that is really scared of sleeping here, bite the pillow, make no sound, or if there's some living to be done, parents are trying to make her sleep. And the chorus is bring your daughter, bring your daughter to the slaughter, let her go, let her go, let her go. Very interesting song, it is. I, I feel like I've heard this song before, for sure. Chorus is very repetitive, there's a nice guitar solo. But then we lead on to the main event, which is Mother Russia. Look, hands down, it's an epic Maiden song. It feels epic. You got these synths, you got this nice, really long instrumental intro. Leads on to such a headbanging phase, and then you get a really nice synth building up. And that melody, that melody is so fantastic, and that chorus, Marva Russia, Dance on the Stars. Love that. Again, you get these really nice guitar solos by Dave Murray and Yannick. Nice prominent bass by Steve Harris. It's a very enjoyable song by Iron Maiden, I gotta say. It just feels like an epic closer to the album. It's only five minutes and 30, but it still feels like an epic closer due to those synths. Those synths you get throughout this song. Do, 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 do. Love that. 
it's just a great way to close off the album. So in terms of what I thought about this album, I thought this album was very good, but it's a bit of a disappointment from Seventh Son of the Seventh Son. I just feel like The Fear of the Dark might be slightly better to No Prayer of the Dying. I feel that like No Prayer of the Dying is a very fun album and is, but there are some very forgettable songs. Like sometimes I forget the melodies of the songs. Run Silent Run Deep. It's not very melodic and it seems like an, a forgettable song. Public Enemy Number One is okay. Fate's Warning, I can always remember that end of that song. But there are some forgettable songs on this album. That's just my brutal honest opinion. So for Iron Maiden, No Prayer for the Dying. I gotta say I'm gonna probably give this a solid 7 out of 10. Definitely not the best Iron Maiden album. Probably in the middle of the pack. I feel that Fear of the Dark might be slightly better than No Prayer for the Dying. But again, it's missing Adrian Smith. I feel that with Adrian Smith, it would definitely incorporate some more more elements of surprise throughout this album. I believe he did write one song off this album, which was uh, which was Hooks in You. He wasn't featured on this album, I don't think. And yeah, so I'm going to give this a solid 7 out of 10. Guys, comment below if you enjoyed it, this review. Comment below what your favourite song in, in Iron Maiden, No Prayer for the Dying is. And also comment below what album you want me to review next for Iron Maiden. So keep the discussion going in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want, and I'll see you in the next